don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Next question comes from Stephanie, and Stephanie is writing in from Nashville. All right, Stephanie writes, I am Playroom Puzzled. Hi, Betsy. I enjoy your podcast so much and have learned so many things along the way. My family and I just moved into our potential forever home, and we are excited to get settled in. But decorating with confidence is not one of my strong suits. Our playroom is downstairs and open to the kitchen, living room, and dining room. It's perfect so my wild toddler can play while I work in the kitchen. But it also means I want for it to look polished. So storage cubes, baskets will be good for us. My question is, on which wall should I put the storage cabinet bench that I think will help us functionally and with the aesthetics? I've attached a picture of an idea I found from Pinterest using the IKEA Calyx storage cubbies. For those of you who don't know the IKEA name, the Calyx storage cubbies are like the square cubbies that come in lots of different configurations. You can lay them on their side, you can put them up vertically, and they do make a good bench height. They're also a really good bookcase. They've been around for since before I was a designer, which is 17 years. And so I know you know the ones I'm talking about and Stephanie's referring to, even if you don't know the name. The room has a large window on the wall that you face when you look into the room, so it's a very nice focal point. Do I have to try and fit the cabinets on the window wall so that we only have one focal point, or can I put the storage cabinets bench on another wall? If so, which one? The one you would see when entering the living area or the one that would be hidden unless you were in the dining area? I have attached a few pictures. I hope this helps. Also, I need to get a big rug or floor mat that will be easy to clean with toddler spills for the room. I like the idea of a foam mat, but I wondered if you had any ideas for places that have more adult colors that look more like a rug. Thank you for your help, Stephanie. Stephanie, you've triggered me. I want to go back to your original question, but I can't because now we're talking about foam mats. I hate foam mats. I hate with a passion. I had toddlers. I had infants. I hate foam foam mats. I refuse to buy foam mats. The only foam mats I find even slightly tolerable are the ones that have the wood grain. I think it can be fun to like kind of be whimsical and make them try and match your wood flooring so they almost disappear. But overall, I just hate them with a capital H. So I'm really excited that you're interested in moving away from the foam tiles. I'm just going to answer this quick and easy question first because the other one's quite complicated and let you know that I love floor tiles. So floor tiles are those square carpet pieces that come in lots of colors, shapes, textures, um, so many patterns, so many price points, and they stick to themselves with these kind of industrial tacky stickers. They don't stick to your floor, so you can peel them up very easily. My kids spilled bubble bath on one. My friends spilled a bottle of wine on one. All of these are things that are not going to easily come out, but... The floor tile itself easily comes out. So I just literally cut it out and I kept extra in my closet and I plopped a new one right in the hole and we were good to go. I highly recommend checking that out. They fit a variety of styles and budgets and they're just so practical for people with kids, people with pets, or people with friends who spill like mine. I also spill, by the way. I also spill. It was just not me that time. Uh, Okay, so let's get to the other question about the layout of the room. Now, you guys know from listening to my podcast that the one thing I don't weigh in on is the living room layout or any layout, not just living room, not just playroom, layouts in general, because I have a proprietary method that I use every time to create the perfect layout for every room. And I need to do my due diligence and go through all of sort of my um, process with that. And I can't easily do that without talking to you and learning more information. So I don't ever like to give uh, specific feedback on layouts. That being said, I can give you things to think about, things to consider, places to start. 
the thing about a playroom is there's a lot of clutter. There's big toys, there's small toys. And I do love the Calyx. I had the Calyx in my playroom. Instead of having the low one that serves as a bench, I had the really high five by five and it could do anything. It held the diapers and baskets. It held books, those deep books, like the larger ones that kids have. The Calyx is um, a little bit deeper than a normal bookcase, so they fit really nicely. Bins of Legos, toddler toys, it all worked really well, but it can be very visually cluttered if you don't use bins, especially the bigger ones. Now, you had mentioned putting this Calyx on its side under the window to use it as a bench. Just to paint the picture, when I'm in the main space, I can easily see right in. There's like a very big, maybe eight foot opening into this playroom. Thus, the playroom only really has three walls, right? And the wall opposite the great big opening is the window. So I see why you're calling that the focal point. Uh, and yes, that can be the focal point in the room. But right under the window, you have a vent. If you put the calyx there, it's going to completely shut off that airflow source. So I worry that that could be problematic to get heating and cooling into the room. Also, while the window is a focal point, the toys are not a focal point. I do not want that to be the first thing I see when I walk into this playroom. I would much rather you flank this window with a beautiful, fun, playful, patterned drapes and then put the storage on the sides. So it's kind of what I see in my periphery, but not what I see in my main glimpse as I'm walking by. The other thing you may want to consider, because, let's see, scrolling through your pictures, it doesn't look like there's much wall on either side. So you really couldn't do a barn door, anything like that. You couldn't even do pocket doors in this space. But what you could do is do a drape on the outside that you could easily pull back and forth, say it was on grommets. So that way I could close this space off visually because some of these toys, like, uh, I don't even remember what that thing is called anymore, where it pushes, you know, your kid can learn to walk with it. And then it has all the activities on the other side. And then of course the baby stroller. I think you even have baby fireplace tools here. That's a first for me, little play school fireplace tools. And then of course you have the big climbing tunnel, the jumper These things are never going to fit in a Calyx or any storage unit. And sometimes we just don't want to see that stuff. I certainly wouldn't want to see all that stuff when I'm making dinner or making like a midnight stack if the kids are asleep, right? I think drapes would be a very nice thing to install even on this side. And I would want them to maybe coordinate with the drapes you find inside. And of course, they're going to have to coordinate with the main area's decor to make everything feel very cohesive. I don't think that the Calyx is a misstep. It just bothers me that it doesn't have doors. I think you need bigger storage solutions, something more like a Pax or a Besta that could have some open areas but could ultimately have doors where we could shut these items away. Kids' toys are all these very vibrant colors. Typically, your main living area is not going to be that vibrant. So they could be overwhelming. They could harm the mojo of the other space. Just saying. Uh, so we really want to kind of hide them from view rather than making them so conspicuous. And certainly the bins on the calyx will do that. But for these items that don't always fit in a bin, you might need a larger solution. Or you may need to put them on some wall that's less conspicuous. Uh, so that way you're kind of keeping a more calm view, even though there's a lot of chaos going on. Well, I hope that helped to answer your questions. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Ginny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support. <laughs>